was the 800th and 77th day since our moon left Earth. We were between galaxies, drifting through empty space. When Tony Cellini began to believe that he was closing for a second time with his mortal enemy. Lady, are you all right? Yes. I'm fine, thank you, Doctor. Computer raised the alarm. Your pulse and metabolic rate had peaked into the danger zone. No, it was a dream. That's all. Just a dream. Anything traumatic? No, nothing. All right. If you need any help, I'm on duty tonight. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Playing computer all day. Yeah, I was hoping for a real game, Commander. I beat computer every time. Sure, you program. 
wouldn't stop me beating you. Checkmate. Computer is probably angry because you insulted her. Tony Cellini has entered the restricted area in launch pad four, but he's not on duty. Tony? Tony, what's up? Answer me, Tony. Cancel his car walk. What you doing? Sleepwalking. Medical to embarkation immediately. Kano, he's on board the standby Eagle using Carter's comm lock. Stop him. The Eagle's on manual control, Commander. Computer can do nothing. Computer, command order. Cancel safety restrictions on launch pad four and give me access. well as he can be after a point blank stun. I've been expecting something like this. He's unstable, John. He's an individualist. I've never really understood your admiration for him. Helena, he's not a coward, nor is he emotionally disturbed. He's a suppressed hysteric. Where do you think he was trying to get to out there in his pajamas? We're nowhere. We're three months eagle travel time to the nearest star system, and he was going off on his own. Now, if that's the act of a rational man, he didn't even take his toothbrush. Helena, you didn't know him before the Ultra Pro was launched. He was the best amateur athlete I've ever seen, a poet. An all-round astronaut. In fact, the best all-rounder I've ever met. I'm aware of his history. Something happened out there. Something happened out there beyond Ultra that neither you nor I can understand. Hell, he can't even understand it. That's why it's haunted him. It's destroying him. Look, John, I know the Ultra probe meant a great deal to you, but its success was vital to Cellini. He can't take failure. For that reason alone, you would have been the better commander of that probe. Stick to Cellini. All right. I say that he made a disastrous mistake on that probe ship, and being the acknowledged ace, can't bring himself to admit it. It's not his style. He thinks he's infallible, you think he's infallible, but I don't. Helena, nothing was proved. John, when it all happened, I was a member of the medical team that examined Cellini. My report reinforced the case against him. I just presented the facts as I saw them. There were no facts! 
He is unstable, and as such, he's a threat to the safety of Alpha. Maybe I should have used a laser and killed him. John. Why don't you write another letter to the Space Commission? John's anger was understandable. He and Cellini had been the driving force behind the Ultra Probe. In 1994, before this moon left Earth's orbit, Professor Victor Bergman had discovered a new planet beyond the then known limits of the Earth's solar system. He had called it Ultra. Space News, Dateline, September 3rd, 1996. Brought to you from Houston, planet Earth. The Ultra Probe. Who will command the ship? Anton Gorski, commander of Moon Base Alpha, is expected to put an end to speculations later this week. Yes, yes. We need a decision, you know. You can't both go. Someone's got to control the whole operation from here. You can't leave it to Gorski. All right, Tony, tell you what. I'll flip you for it. Winner takes a ship, loser tells Gorski. Black or yellow? Black. Uh, well? The gods know the better astronaut. The gods know my foot. The guys know the best brains have to stay down here on Alpha. <laughs> Still, I wish I was going. I take it that's it, then? Yeah. That's it. The launch date for Ultra Probe was the 6th of June, 1996. Commander, Captain Tony Cellini. Astrophysicist, Dr. Darwin King. Radiation expert, Professor Juliet Mackey. And Dr. Monique Faucher is responsible for medical, dietary, and psychological well-being of the team. They were shuttled to the Interplanetary Space Station, where the Ultra Probe ship was docked. Embarkation and countdown continued without a hitch. Launch took place at 1,200 hours on schedule. So the longest ever manned space flight began. It continued through eight months of uneventful routine. Nothing disturbed the measured pace of the voyage. No malfunction of the ship broke the monotony. Navigation was faultless. days, excitement mounted as progressive readings confirmed the planet's condition was similar to Earth's. Plans were made for a manned landing, but as the probe ship moved behind Ultra, all contact was temporarily lost with Moonbase Alpha. The landing was never made. Darwin, could you give me an opinion here, please? Metallic? Small and stationary. Orbital reference, 
109. Beam everything we've got in that direction. We're going to take a look. Right. they come from? What are they doing? There's absolutely no sign of life from any of them. Can they really be empty? Perhaps it's some huge conference of all space peoples, and this is just their car park. <laughs> well, where's the conference? There's got to be someone around. Darwin, check with computer. Yep. Julian, put the booster on every band in the live spectrum. There are ships here that could make the dream of interstellar travel a reality. We could be liberated from our own solar system. All we need is someone to show us how it works. Still no signs of life? Absolutely nothing. It's like a graveyard. We'll dock. If computer gives us the all clear, we'll go aboard. Right. Docking seal is perfect. Atmosphere is safe. Temperature, 28 degrees. Radiation, zero. What could be better? Come on, Sesame, open up. Just a check, Darwin. I'm waiting to go there, too. Opening now. Close it, Tony! What is in? Wind, noise, light. It's pretty weird.
Despite his ordeal, Cellini executed a brilliant maneuver to put his lifeboat into a low orbit round Ultra, which hurled him back towards Earth. He survived alone in that module for over six months. Cellini's module was eventually located and brought back to Alpha. He was on the point of death. All right, take him to intensive care. Paul. It's incredible he's alive at all. But he'll survive. Oh, yes. On courage. But as Cellini began to recover his strength, the official attitude towards him changed from congratulation to doubt. The story he told of his encounter with the monster was difficult to believe. And the recorded data of the black box cast further doubt on his veracity. As a member of the Space Commission medical team, I began to inquire into the mental state of the patient. Captain Cellini. Yes? Dr. Helena Russell, Space Commission Medical Center. Oh, welcome, Doctor. I expect you've come to talk. Please, I chat for Dr. Russell. If you've come to hear the story, You'd better be comfortable. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Don't call me Captain. Call me Tony. But you may not want to do that. Depends whether you've come to confirm prejudice or listen with an open mind. Now, what do you mean? They don't believe me. They can't. You see, the green-eyed monster from outer space is firmly established in childhood fantasy, like Father Christmas. How can they possibly believe? Now, look, let's not get off on the wrong track, OK? The fact is, if a man with a red coat and white beard drove into town, he'd be arrested, certified. Unbelievable. And that's what you are going to do with me and my monster, right? 
I didn't even mention the monster. But that's what you want you to talk about, isn't it? Now, I don't have anything specifically in mind. I'm open to anything. Father Christmas, if you like. If you like, Doctor, you came to see me. Maybe in a while we'd get around to my sex life. All right. You seem fairly keen to talk on a wide range of topics. I want to tell you the truth, Doctor. I want to tell you that everything I've put down in my report is true. Tentacles, bloodsuckers, fire breath. The whole slimy, fantastic story is true. No wanderings of a sick man. I'm absolutely certain of every detail I've put down. And if the black box data conflicts with my story, then the black box is wrong. Now, that is a somewhat surprising statement for a rational man. I'm not a rational man. And yet you want to be believed. I want all of you, Kenny, Bergman, Dixon, Every one of you to throw out the criteria by which you judge what's real. You've got to abandon reason. You have to believe that I, Tony Cellini, have stood face to face with the dragon. I fought it single-handed and survived. That's what you've got to believe. No! No, come on, take it away, ah. Captain. <sighs> Captain? Please. Believe me. Victor? Uh -huh. Bad news. Uh -huh. There's going to be a full scale inquiry. Commissioner Dixon has ordered us back to Earth. Uh -huh. Their story is Tony bungled the decompression procedure, opened the airlock prematurely, and killed the crew. Mm, well. That seems a logical explanation. Well, at least it's easier to believe than a monster, isn't it? Victor, if the black box didn't record the monster, isn't it conceivable there are life forms our instruments can't detect? Oh, yeah. It could have even jammed the black box. Just because we haven't experienced something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. No, but we're not likely to know that unless we go back for a second look. No, I think we've got to go back out there. In fact, I know we must. Those spaceships out there can save the space program billions of dollars and hundreds of years. And we know Tony wasn't fantasizing about those, because those contacts are clearly recorded on the black box. Yeah, but that's all they are, contacts. How do we know they're spaceships? Must we disbelieve everything Tony says? No, 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 of course not. But I mean, here's a man virtually come back from the dead. Only naturally, he should have nightmares. It'd be unnatural if he didn't. Look, I refuse to let them dismiss it like that. John, I'm afraid the facts are that our probe was a failure and somebody's head's got to roll. So it's got to be Tony's. While the balance of his mind is disturbed. Well, I don't think it is. Not like they think. Unfortunately, it's Commissioner Dixon who'll be the judge of that. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, sit down, sit down, please. Oh. We are in the red, aren't we? Strange that there's nothing like failure for drying up the money supply. Well, I hope we've all got some strong ideas for alleviating the uh, drought. Commissioner, what about the positive aspects of the mission? Why can't we concentrate public attention on the Earth-like qualities of the planet Ultra? Mm. I'm afraid that vague possibilities don't carry the PR power of a thumping dramatic failure. All right, then let's be positive. Let's launch a second probe right away Take our experience and put it to good use by getting right out there. Before we get carried away with the future, Koenig, we must first concentrate on the past. I want to know what you two think really happened out there. I'm the only one who can answer that, Commissioner. Oh, yes? You've had my report. Oh, the whole world's had your report. That's my problem. It's also the truth. 
or an elaborate cover-up for an error of judgment you haven't the guts to admit. Now, what do you say to that? It's just not true. Now, I need to know what you two have to say. Do you believe in monsters? Well, I believe that whatever caused the disaster affected Tony's mind in some way which he can't recognize and we can't even guess at. Koenig? Commissioner, we know those ships are out there and one of them is ours. What we should be asking ourselves is why they're there and what happened to them. We have a series of unidentified bleeps recorded from the scanner, that's all. As far as I'm concerned, this vision of a spaceship's graveyard is as much the product of a sick mind as a ghoulish monster. So please, let's keep with the facts. Now tell me straight, Bergman, what caused the interference on that tape? How can you say? Could it be anyone Could it be him? We, uh, Tony could have done it, although I can't honestly see why he should. As a cover-up. Why would he restart normal recording four minutes and 45 seconds later? Are you going to suggest the monster did it, Koenig? We can't dismiss that possibility. You surprise me, John. Commissioner, that black box recorded a breathable atmosphere inside that alien spaceship. The docking seal was intact. The moment the door was open, the recording stopped. Therefore, there is no evidence of death by decompression on that tape. What I'm saying, Commissioner, is that your case against Cellini holds no more water than his story does. Quite obviously, you're not concerned with your reputations. But mine is bound up with the future of the space program, and I'll do anything to save that. I'm afraid that I shall have to discredit this whole adventure. Now, Commissioner, you just can't scrap the ultra probe and ignore those ships out there. We've had a lot of success so far. We've learned a great deal about our solar system. We know what dangers to expect out there from black suns, neutron storms, radiation and the like, but if we think we know everything that goes on out there, we're making a terrible mistake. Koenig, the reality of space adventuring is that it's terribly expensive. The chances come infrequently, and then only one at a time. I very much regret it, but I shall have to relieve you all of your posts. You for some suitable mental supervision, and you two to remind you both what it's like to have your feet on the ground. By September 13th, 1999, the day the moon blasted out of Earth's orbit, John Koenig was back on Alpha as commander of the base. Victor Bergman, Tony Cellini, and I were also there. Memories of the ultra probe ship disaster were obliterated in our fight for survival until the night when Tony's nightmare revived all the old conflicts. You killed All right. How are you? All right. All right enough to let me in? But, John... <laughs> I... You know, as a kid, I never could get Crest to grow on blotting paper, but that's doing very well. Where did you get it? I inherited it from my predecessor. There was this big bag of stuff just waiting to grow. I thought I'd give it a whirl. That's very beautiful. Is it for me? You know, I must admit, I got a little help from the guys in the hydroponic unit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I deserve some credit. What I'm trying to say is, I'm sorry I chewed your head off. Well, you're doing it in a very nice way. How's he? Much better. You know, I don't understand. It's five years since the ultra probe. Why should he break now? 
because it can happen at any time, which is exactly why I recommended that he never be returned to Alpha. Helena, I requested it. Can I speak? Tony. Now just take it easy. It's all right. Here, let me get these. What happened last night? I... I felt there was something. Where were you going? There's nothing around, nothing for billions of miles. You had a nightmare last night. 0347. Medical computer raised the alarm. And I woke you. Remember? It was nothing. Well, Tony... We found a tomahawk buried in the communications post in your quarters. Was it the monster? Then why now? What were you trying to do in the Eagle? Were you trying to run away from it? I was going to face it. Something quite extraordinary. Kind of a space motor show. Well, Victor? It's the same sort of thing Cellini described. The mission to Planet Ultra. Victor. Last night, Cellini had a violent nightmare, fighting his monster. Now, after the nightmare, maybe even as part of it, he tried to steal an eagle. I had to stun him. Now, he just came around, and I asked him what happened. He said he was going out to face it. But the monster? Well, those could be the same spaceships he saw behind Ultra. And if they are, we could be facing the same danger he faced. Sandra, increase magnification. John, we're light years away from Ultra. Victor, this moon has moved, so could they. But the coincidence, something triggered Cellini, something we can't ignore. Cano? Sir. I want computer to check the records, the flight records of Ultra Probe 1996. Now, the flight recorder picked up certain contacts similar to those. I want to know if they're the same. Commander, I have found it. The Ultra Probe ship is there. It's incredible. Yeah. So is Cellini's story about the monster. Alan, I want a docking eagle on pad one for immediate liftoff. I want an escort. Three ships ready for action. Go. Right. So I get a second chance. Any sign of life? I've scanned the whole area. There's nothing. There never was. Tony, I'm taking an eagle up there with an armed escort. We'll get as close as it's safe to and scan it. If Victor's absolutely certain there's no danger in the area, on board the probe ship, we'll dock. Now, how does that sound to you? Sounds fine. Are you willing to come with us? I'd insist. He's too calm. He's got a chance to clear himself after five years. I'm worried, John.
Helena. Focus hard on those ships as we go by. Excuse me. I have to apologize to Alan. Alan, sorry about last night. Yeah. Three and four immediate liftoff. Follow Cellini and Eagle One. Eagle Two, jettison your passenger module and pick us up at launch pad one. Sorry, John, but it's my enemy. Beam every scanner we have in Cellini's direction. If you find anything, let me know right away. Yes, sir. You think he's gone ahead to destroy the evidence? What's that guy got against me? Eagle 2, docked on Eagle 1, Commander. All right, take it away. Give it everything we've got. command module on the probe ship. The control systems are compatible. We've got the area scanned from here, from Alpha, and close up from Eagles 3 and 4. So far, no life indications, no radiation, no energy field, nothing. Paul. Still nothing indicated, Commander. Gotta be something. He was right about those ships. That doesn't mean he was necessarily right about the monster. No, but it makes him look a whole lot righter. Victor? Sorry, John, but beyond the obvious explanation, I can't be much help. The obvious, then? Well, they do look somewhat like flies caught in a spider's web. Which brings us back to monsters. for docking on the probe ship. Make it as smooth as you can. John, we're getting life signs on the probe ship. Cellini's. If there was anything else, we'd be receiving it. Providing our instruments can read it.
Talking complete, Commander. Halima, maybe you better stay here. Let's go. monster was more than any of us could believe. According to our criteria, it was never alive. So how could we be sure that it was dead? As we hurried back to Alpha, before our moon drifted beyond reach, we could only wonder about the astronauts of those other fabulous ships. All we know about them is their terrible fate, the fate of Tony Cellini. John, if we ever do find a new place to live, and if we succeed, we're going to need a whole new mythology. Tony, Cellini, and the monster? No. Well, St. George and the Dragon sounds pretty flat, until you know the story. The story is part of our history now, Helena. I think Tony would be very happy to know he put new life into an old myth. <laughs> <laughs> 